So what we're seeing in the clinic, um, taking care of lots of patients with severe food allergy, is an option for treatment that was not previously available. You know, previously, uh, for a long, long time, all we had was avoid the food, and then there was some other treatment like oral immunotherapy that came into play, but we were still left with a very little in the way of options, even less in the way of FDA-approved options. So this was something we were able to bring to our patients and thinking about the unique things about some patients that might make this drug really appealing. And <clears throat> those are things like how many foods you're allergic to, how hard it is to avoid those foods, um, how much anxiety you have related to food avoidance. And we have started a large number of patients in my clinic on amalizumab with um, what the parents, uh, uh, I'm mostly pediatric, so the parents of these uh, children would say has been uh, absolutely life-changing. There um, have been um, different ways of drugs being used. As um, um, most people know, it's approved to be used along with avoiding the food, but we've actually taken advantage of the um, protection that the drug provides to be able to actually introduce foods into many, many patients who were previously highly allergic. And th that goes beyond, I just feel more comfortable eating out in a restaurant or taking a trip. It actually goes to, oh my gosh, you can eat a piece of pizza now after being so allergic to all forms of milk for her entire lifetime. There um, are limitations. You can't be less than one year of age. And there's a dosing table that is based on something called an IgE level. And you might have had allergy testing before where someone says your peanut Ig level is such and such. The total Ig level is what we use to dose on melismab. The total Ig level is the sum of all of your allergic antibodies from your cats and pollens to your milk, to your tree nuts, to your peanut. And if that level is too high, you may not be eligible. And that's affecting, we estimate, between 10 and 20% of patients who might otherwise uh, be uh, good candidates for this, uh, this form of treatment. It's a um, very specific dosing table, um, and it's based both on your weight and this IgE level. So if you're little, like you're a one-year-old, you, you can go up to an IgE level of, of, of 1,850. And if you're a, a big kid uh, or an adult, uh, you may only be able to have an Ig level um, um, up to about 1,100. So again, this, uh, this is a, a real issue in food allergy where a lot of patients have a lot of allergies. Uh, so it um, has been um, uh, an, an issue of excluding some people who would otherwise uh, be eligible and might uh, actually be the best candidates for the drug because they might be the most likely to have truly multiple, multiple food allergies. And then there, there's more work that's needed. And we just got approval uh, this past Tuesday to initiate a study uh, at Johns Hopkins on uh, focused only on patients who far exceed the dosing table. And this is not a study that is necessarily going to lead to a change in the label, but we're trying to accumulate the information uh, to show that the drug actually works um, in patients with higher Ig levels um, and uh, hope that over time uh, that restriction will be lessened or completely lifted. Um, I hate to say my biggest surprise is that it doesn't work equally for everyone and we need to be uh, very careful about how we use the drug then and we do believe that for the vast majority of patients it does do what the label says. It gives protection against exposure to small um, uh, accidents that uh, you know, parents and, and uh, our patients worry about every day. Um, about half, two thirds of people can actually go directly to eating serving size portions of their foods. But the other group, um, <clears throat> even though protected against uh, small exposures, may not have that same level of, uh, of protection. And that's something we're trying to sort out. We're trying to uh, develop predictors of what patients may be uh, best um, uh, candidates. And then trying to um, really decide what, do we, uh, what can we use to determine the level of protection after somebody has been treated. And it turns out for the most part, the only way we truly know is to do a food challenge. 
And the way we're using that in my clinic is that if someone would really like to be able to introduce a food, and um, for a lot of reasons, most of them pretty obvious to the uh, listeners here, the interest in eating uh, large amounts of peanut is very small. The interest in being able to have something like milk or wheat in your diet is really huge. So we're actually approaching the, uh, the patients very, in a very individualized kind of way, <clears throat> where if somebody does have a severe allergy to something like milk, egg, or wheat, we are essentially always recommending a food challenge. <clears throat> and for that person to know that they could you know, eat a donut, have a piece of pizza, um, is what's really life-changing because uh, for those foods, there's often an interest in going beyond <clears throat> just that protection from an accident. And with things like peanut, tree nuts, sesame, those allergens, our, our, our families are quite pleased just to have the protection from the, um, what the label says, protection against reactions to small accidental exposures. We expect that it will continue to grow in its use. There uh, is always hesitation with a new approval. There's a little bit of pushback from the payers that we need to kind of overcome. There's quite a bit of time required in the office to accomplish these prior authorizations. But everything uh, as we see it and as we walk around the conference and talk to our colleagues has been um, a uh, major, if not enormous change in the uh, the care of our patients with food allergy. The other big question that people want to know, well, how long am I going to be on it? Will it uh, uh, remove my allergies? And the answer is it will not remove your allergies. Like any of our allergy medicines, it will work while you're on it. We don't believe that it's going to help uh, the, the long-term course of your allergies. So once you decide to stop it, we expect you to go back to your original baseline. But whether somebody stays on it, just for pre-K, uh, because that's a scary year, um, or stays on it for a decade or longer is really, again, back to this joint decision-making, talking to each family about uh, the pros and cons and what it's doing for them, um, and uh, uh, sort of moving forward from there. We're also excited about new treatment options 10 years from now. We may have you know, six more choices for patients, and, and that's our, our goal of doing this research. Very honestly, our goal is to give more patients more options to manage their food allergies.